This is, uh, I picked this game from a 2000 World Championship between Vladimir Kramnik and Kasparov, Gary Kasparov. This uh, match was won by Kramnik, you know, surprisingly, because he was, you know, considered the underdog in this match, but he played very well and uh, I think he didn't even lose any games. Yeah, so he <coughs> won the first game and then, yeah, he, he, he played very well overall and just won the match convincingly. So let's look, take a look at this opening. D4, knight f6. C4, e6. Knight c3, bishop b4. What is the name of this opening? Nimzo Indian defense. So it's a very interesting and solid opening choice by Black. And now he chose the move e3. <coughs> so what's the name of this variation? Any ideas? One of the mo main lines, this is the, this move and queen c2. Classical and e3 is called the Rubenstein, Rubenstein variation. Now he castles. Bishop d3. d5. Knight f3, the main lines. c5. Castles. C takes d4. E takes d4. D takes c4, taking on c4. <coughs> Bishop takes c4. And now, he played the move b6. I like this system for black as well. I've played it myself. The idea is to go bishop b7. And very solid position for black. No weaknesses. I play the move bishop g5. Activating the bishop and pinning it. He's activating it and pinning it. Now, bishop b7. Developing the bishop and now putting pressure on f3. Rook to e1. <coughs> Developing the rook on open file. And now knight bd7. Knight bd7. And now the last piece that needs to be developed. Well, also queen is available. Rook c1 is played. So this is still theory. So the both players are following theory. And now a very sharp move here played by Kromnik. So let's see if you can find this move. White to play. Bishop is under attack on c4, and yeah, if you go bishop b3, it's possible, but you're a little bit retreating. So what can you do here that you can combine defense of the bishop with an offensive attempt? Alex? Queen d3, and if bishop takes f3, I think your queen is going to be overworked. Because you cannot take back, you're going to lose the bishop. It's going to get overworked. It's going to get overworked. Combine defense of the bishop with some offensive attempt. Yes. Bishop d3 is a possibility, is a possibility, yes. 
But that's again defense a little bit. Yeah, going to defense a little bit. Queen to b3. Queen to b3, okay? <coughs> Activating your queen and attacking the bishop. Attacking the bishop. Now, um, the best move is bishop c3, actually. Rook takes c3. h6, questioning the bishop. Bishop goes back on h4. And now, bishop d5 is one possibility. Or queen e8 is another way to play, to unpin the pin. I think these positions are very close to equal. Maybe small advantage for white. But he didn't play bishop c3, which was surprising. And he played the move bishop e7. This turned out to be a blunder. <coughs> question mark. Now why? The question is why? Is this a question mark? Now what's the idea here? Yes? My idea is to push the deep on and see if I can trap that bishop. But that runs into knight c5 immediately. Your queen is going to be on pre. That's the problem. Your queen is going to be on pre. The move is a difficult one to find because we don't think about doing that move right now. But your bishop e6 idea is going to work, but maybe a little bit later. Okay? You need to do something first, and then perhaps it will work. Yes? 95, 95 was already suggested, but the 95 just takes. 95 he just takes, and maybe even 97 back. Uh, you know. It's playable position. What else? What else can you think of? Your idea bishop e6. Think about it. How can you make this idea work? How can you work this out? This idea. Because when we go bishop e6 right away, the problem is queen e6 check, he goes rook f7. And then we don't have a jump. So what about okay? bishop takes knight? Aha, uh -huh. yes. Bishop takes f6. That's what he played first. So he's exchanging the bishop to give himself the knight g5 move. So knight takes f6 was played. Bishop f6, knight b5 is very unpleasant. Because now hitting the pawn on a7 and threatening knight d6. Okay? Goes here, knight d6 comes in. And now it's suddenly it's very difficult to get that knight out of there. <coughs> Look at that tactic. If takes, bishop e6. So that's why he goes knight takes f6. Now he goes knight takes f6. And which idea going to work now? Still now bishop takes works. Perfect. Attacking the rook as well. So he takes. Check. If he go rook f7, then I have knight g5. Okay? So that's why he has to go here, because if he goes rook f7, knight g5 attacking this. If he goes here, you just take and take. Okay? So he goes king h8. And now, take the bishop. Free bishop. Take the free bishop. Knight to g5, you're only going to win an exchange if you go knight f7. Now, bishop takes f3, hoping to escape. Hoping to escape to a draw here by ruining the structure. Structure now is ruined. Now, what are you going to do? If you take the queen, rook f8, and then you will lose your central pawn. And yes, you will have extra pawn, but your pawn structure will be very weak. Okay? So something like this. Or...
sorry. Maybe even this way, capture and takes. And the pawns are weak, okay? So some chances for a draw. So that's why Kramnik went G takes F right away. So he's not afraid of this move. But now it's a very concrete move here. You need to play very concrete here because again, the king is a little bit weak and pawn structure is ruined. So which active move he played here? He won this move in 25, this game in 25 moves. So, played a very strong game here. Yes? It's possible, but what else you have? What else you can try to do? Knight e4, it's an idea, but then he might take knight takes c4. And if you undouble the pawns, f2 pawn hangs. It's the rook and a queen. Any other active ideas you see? Maybe knight uh, e5. Correct decision, yes. That's, like, that's what he played. Activating the knight, attacking the queen, and not really interested in winning this pawn. Because you'll see. Uh, Queen f4 was another interesting idea. Kasparov took the pawn on b2. Queen f4 is interesting, but white is still better after knight d6. That's where the knight wants to go. He's not interested in grabbing some pawns. Queen f3 and now just take, and king escapes. So there's no perpetual here. I mean, this white is up exchange. You should be able to win this, okay? Uh, so that's why he took the pawn on b2, and now, what are you going to do? Make sure you don't blunder now, okay? Make sure you don't blunder. Rook takes c8. Correct. Rook takes c8. <laughs> and now, which piece is going to come in into the game? That we, we've been trying to bring this piece in as well, right? To create threats. Yes? Nine. Where? Um, okay. Excellent decision. Again, <coughs> see, a lot of people would get tempted about taking pawns. Like pawn on SA, but that's not you. You don't get tempted by that. You want to bring the knight in because you're going to try to win this game by attack. Now he goes rook b8. Now. Now what are you going to do? <coughs> pause, pause, don't rush. Knight e8. Best defense was actually rook a8. This was the best defense, okay? There is a difference, but he played here. So, which move? Queen. Mm, knight takes. Oh, I didn't see that. Yeah. <laughs> knight e8, uh, it's an idea, but I don't think he played knight e8. Because there is knight g8 response, that's why. Protecting. Yes? Knight f7. Check. Remember, check the king first. He goes here now. You remember the smother mate idea? Mm -hmm. Put him into that smother mate idea so you can do it. How are you going to do it? Which move you need to set up that mechanism? He's got it. Excellent. Yes. Now he can play h5, or he can play rook f8. He played rook f8, which is losing, but we're going to look at h5 as well. So let's see the finish first. Do you see the finishing touch now? Knight h6, and here? And here? Ay, ay, ay. <laughs> the world champion wouldn't blunder the smother mate. So he played a move. He he you know he sees that. 
He's not going to just blunder that. Right here, you can force the resignation in two moves. Who is going to get that, huh? Who is going to find that resignation idea? And what's the follow-up? <laughs> okay, yes, yes. <laughs> Remember, when you want to trap the rook, sometimes you put a piece there and reduces his scope. Not too difficult. No, check. He has to go here now. Rook is getting trapped now. Not so many squares to go to. And who is going to find the finishing touch? It's clear. It's evident now. Yeah? Yes? Queen e7. Show me a way how to protect the rook. Knight d7, not going to do it. Queen takes. If you take queen takes, if you go here, beautiful finish, right? Mm -hmm. That you were trying to do it. Background checkmate. And if he goes now rook g8, what are you going to do? Now the Bravo. There you go. Okay, that's what happened now. After knight d, queen e7, he resigned. In a view of the following variations. In a view of those following variations, he resigned. Yes. Any questions? Wait, so, so if he just goes back now, king to g8. What does white do? King to g8 here? Yeah. Oh, here knight f. Oh, king g8. One second. You move the knight, and you move the queen out, and now the king just goes over g8. Aha. Oh, king goes to g8. Uh, no, it doesn't. Okay. 96. 96. Threatening checkmate. Threatening checkmate. Only way to stop those checkmates is to play rook f7, correct? And now? Um, Check. Yeah. Okay. So it's a knight transfer. What is your question? Um, this little tough one. That's toughy. Yeah? And king g8? Check. This is the winner, Alan. Okay? All right. So now you saw how he managed to play this position. Now, I have a couple of positions that I want to set up for you some end game positions and see if you can find a, the, the good plan to win okay some end games we're gonna do so let's start out with this position first now you're playing from the blacks uh, perspective here okay you are under a check and you need to make a decision here okay so this is a game between Fisher. Fisher is actually, wow, it's Fisher. Robert Fisher is white against Russian Grandmaster Holmov. 1965, played in Havana, Cuba. So now, what is the correct move here? Let me flip the board so you're playing from black. What is the correct move here for, for Grandmaster Holmov? As you see, he has a positional advantage. Because he has positional advantage because of the a protected pass pawn on C4. So what to do here? What is the move that he played that helped him to defeat Fischer here? You have a couple of options. Take your time. Take your time and make sure you find the right idea. So you have a couple of places you can go to here with the king. King f7, playing it safe. What was the thought of moving over the rook to check? But then he goes king e4. He is centralizing his king. That's playing a little bit safe. Okay. Not playing for the maximum advantage, yeah? What is the correct decision that needs to be played to play for maximum advantage? Yes? King F5. Absolutely. Absolutely, King F5 needed. 
It's a little bit risky, but that's needed, okay? In order to play for a win, you need that. So he played rook g7, Fischer activating the bishop. Now, bishop to b, d8. What is the threat? Do you see the threat now for black? What is black trying to do now by playing bishop d8? He created a nice threat here that he wants to go with it. What's the threat? Bishop b6. Attacking. Bishop b6, attacking, yes. Now, in this position, Fischer played rook b7. But it was worth to try this move, I think. Rook a to g1. And now it looks like it's losing because of this move. But in fact, bishop b6 is a huge blunder here. Who can point out why it's a huge blunder? Should be more hands. <laughs> Should be more hands, I think, by now. Why is this a huge blunder, huh? Yes? In the back? Rook to uh, g5, I don't think it even matters yeah. which one I use. Uh, that's that's me, co yeah. me coming. Look at that! I know, yeah. See? That's why, that's why, <laughs> that's why Alan here want to go there. Okay, well, don't worry, but you have a way out of this. Look, you start out with this check. You start out with this check. Take, take, and what's the winning move? Rook belongs where, everybody? Open file, check, pick up the pawns, pick up the game, yeah? Perfect. So that's why he didn't win that. That's why Fischer went rook b7, preventing this move. Now, continue play good. Continue play good here. Rook belongs where? Open file, right? So rook b7. Now he played uh, rook b8. Now, Bishop is pinned, so he goes rook g7. So he can move that. So now a4 is played. Now, the following plan is very interesting that uh, Grandmaster Kolmov is trying to do here. Let's see if we can find the following plan here for him. If the bishop moves, the problem is rook f8 check. So he kind of wants to keep the bishop here, but he also wants to create a threat, some kind of threat. Yes? That's a possibility. You could do that, but bishop is okay for now. It's shutting down the rook. So he's going to capture, capture, and maybe activate a rook and pin you a little bit. What else do you see here? What else can you mention here? Huh? That's what she just said. <laughs> take, take, here. You're getting pinned up now. Well, it's not bishop move. <laughs> okay? It's not a bishop move. What about this square, huh? That's a weak square, right? Mm -hmm. You would love to put a rook there, right? And say check. How are you going to arrange that, huh? How are you going to play like the Russian grandmaster? Yes? Push the pawn, uh, Excellent. See? That was a good hint for you. Now you got it. Takes. Takes. And now Fischer captured the pawn. Uh, rook a8 was a better move, but it still, uh, it still loses the game after h4 and rook g3. But he took. And now, what is the correct move here? Don't rush. So there is no longer a threat of rook f8. That means which piece we can activate since there is no longer that threat. Yeah. 
Yes? Bishop. Bishop h4. Bravo. Now you threaten check and take. So he went back to e1. Now we know rooks belong where? Seventh rank check. King f1. Rook is under attack. You don't have time to take my bishop. So what you what you are going to do is you gotta put this so nice square, yes. Rook h2. Two. Now bishop g1 is failing to rook f3. It's like mate. Okay? Big trouble. Cannot go here, takes. So he has to go king g1 if he doesn't want to get mated. Yeah, see how good the position of the king is here? It's not gonna get checked, it's like very active and it's hidden. Now, the rook is under attack. What you're going to do with the rook? You wanna get some tempos to attack this piece, right? Yes? Uh, uh. Rook e2 attacking the bishop now twice. Bishop b6, and now Push. Push. Pass pounds, remember, they meant to be pushed. And that's what you're doing. Pass pounds meant to be pushed. C2 and rook d1 is coming. So he goes king f1, attacking your rook. Now, under attack, the final move was nice too. He simply went back where? Yeah. Uh, rook Absolutely. Threatening check again. And Fisher resigned here, and this was one of the rare games that where he lost an endgame, you know? He was uh, outplayed. So King G1 played. He, he didn't play this move, his opponent, but if he plays King G1, what is the correct move now? To remain the rook here. To keep that rook there. Yes? Rook D7. No? Rook D2, I mean. No? Bishop G3, protecting it. And now he goes rook c5, and the final touch of this game. Yes? Push pawn. Push pawn, you're correct. Push pawn with the threat of rook d1. That is the finishing touch. Okay? That is the finishing touch. All right, excellent. Any questions? So that was a very interesting game. It started out as a better position for Grandmaster. This is the game Fisher versus Holmov, 1965 Havana. And uh, yeah, this uh, King F5, you have to go for maximum if you want to win. If you go King F3, F7, after King E4, it's not so clear. It's not so clear at all. I mean, black is maybe still a little bit better, but white will have its own counterplay with doubling up the rooks and trying to create counterplay. Okay. So it's very important not to be afraid. There were some tricks. It wasn't absolutely safe. As you saw, there were some ways that you could actually get made it if you blundered, you know? But again, with precise calculation of rook e3, this rook g1 idea doesn't work, and you will simply win this endgame after rook d8. So it was a good example of how to play this endgame and how to use your king as a major piece to come in into the game to control squares to make it more difficult for the opponent to do anything.